I genuinely enjoy creating videos like this, where we have different objects present and the camera moves right through them. I created a similar loop, which was far more sci-fi in this video over here. However, I kept facing a problem, which is that some objects might come into the path of the camera. To prevent that, I had to play around with the seed value until I got a random generation where there weren't any objects in the path of my camera. In today's video, we'll go through a different method of creating similar animations so that we don't have to play around with the seed and our objects will never come in contact with the path of the camera. We'll keep it fairly simple and short and with that, let's begin the tutorial. In our default scene, we're going to bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and we'll change this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree. We'll zoom in, select the group input and tap X to delete it. Now, before I actually create the objects that we're going to scatter around the volume, I'll actually create the mechanism by which we'll have a free path for our camera to move because that is the main bulk of this tutorial. So I'll press shift A and search for a cube, which is going to be converted into a volume in which we'll distribute points. So this cube has to have the size, has to have the size according to what volume I want. So I want it to loop every 10 meters. So I'll change the Y value to 10. And beyond that, I need it to be fairly far on the X axis. So I'll change this to 20. And because we're using a horizontal aspect ratio, the Z axis does not have to be all the way at 20. We can keep that somewhat lower. We'll maybe keep it at 15 and that should be good enough for the loop. Next, we need to convert this into a volume. So we'll press shift A and search for a mesh to volume node and plug that in right after the cube, after which we'll press shift A and search for a distribute points in volume node. So to delete all the points that are coming in the path of the camera, we need to figure out what points fit within a radius around or a certain distance around the Y axis. So we're going to actually use vector math to do that. Just to understand the math behind it, let's assume that we have some point present over here. If this is the origin, then the position of this point will be a vector that goes from the origin to the point like this. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be perfectly above the Y axis. It could be towards the sides as well. So maybe it could be like this where it's going away from the Y axis. So it has some component like that, as well as some component like this and things like that. However, if we were to ignore the Y axis component of any of these vectors by multiplying it by zero on the Y axis, we'd eventually get a vector that is either going perpendicularly up if it's directly above the Y axis like this point, or we get a vector that's slightly tilted towards the side if it's like this point over here. So either way, if we take the length of this vector, we would eventually find out how far away each of these points are from the Y axis. So we have have to initially take the position vector multiplied by zero so that we ignore the y axis value then find the length of that vector and that will give us the distance of the point from the y axis hopefully that makes sense so let's figure out how we can do that in geometry nodes so we want to delete the points that are present within that distance from the y axis so we press shift and search for a delete geometry plug that in after the distribute points and volume and we need to select the correct points so we press shift and search for a position node and we press shift and search for a vector math node because we have to multiply it by zero on the y axis. So let's plug the position into the first vector, change this from add to multiply and keep y axis value as zero and change the x axis to one and z axis to one. Now we need to find the length of this new vector that we just created. We need to search for another vector math node and change it from add to length. So this way, if you plug the vector into the vector, you get the length as the output. Now we need to see if this length is lesser than a specific number, then it should get deleted. We have to compare it with the value that we want. So let's search for a compare node, plug this into to the first socket and we need to check if it's less than. So let's change this from greater than to less than. And we say less than, let's start off with 0.5. Now, if we plug this result into the selection, we should get a bunch of points that are deleted that come close to the Y axis. Now it might be really hard to see, but if we start increasing the density, you'll be able to tell that there's clearly a nice path created for our camera. But if we keep the density fairly low, it will be really hard to tell that we've actually manipulated the points in such a way that there's no points within the path of the camera. And that'll just look very natural. Of course, it depends on your use case. If you want to create something like a tunnel, you can always go ahead and increase the density up to something that makes it look like a tunnel. Now, remember, this is completely procedural, so you can always change the distance that you want. Let's say you add in some objects which are a bit too large and they're still coming into the camera view. You can go ahead and just start increasing this number and that'll just clear a larger and larger path. So it's actually fairly simple to control using this single value over here. Now that we have this created, let's just name this as the GeoNodes object and then hide it for now 
while we create the other objects that will instance onto the points. So let's press shift A and just add in a few primitives. So let's add in a cube, press GX and move it to the side, then press shift A, add in maybe a UV sphere, press control one to add in a subdivision surface of level one, just to make it nice and smooth. And then press GX and move it to the side, then press shift A and add in a cylinder, but we can't add in a subdivision surface to the cylinder directly because if we do, you see the shape completely changes. So let's press X and delete it and just add in another cylinder. And this time, before we do anything, we'll go to this drop down over here, expand it and change the vertices to whatever we feel comfortable with. So let's go with 64 and that just makes it a bit smoother and then press GX and move it to the side. Then let's add in a cone. We can keep it like this itself or if you want to change the shape, you can always press tab to go into edit mode, go to the base select mode and just scale this down a bit because I think I like this shape a bit better for the cone, but it doesn't make too much of a difference. Then you can press GX and move it to the side. Then lastly, I want to add in a torus. So let's search for a torus and again, control one to give it a subdivision surface of level one. Now let's press GX and bring it to the side. And all of these still have a flat shading to them. So you can see each of the faces. I don't want that. So I'll press B for box select and select all of them. Or you can just directly click and drag to select all of them and then go for object and click shades auto smooth. By clicking shade auto smooth, they become smooth and you still see these hard creases on the cylinder and things like that. If you just click shade smooth, it's not going to look the way you want it to. So let's bring it back to shade auto smooth and shift all of these to a new collection. With all of them selected, you can tap N and type new collection and name the collection as whatever you want. I'll call this primitives and then click OK. Next, I can go ahead and just press this button next to the primitives collection to hide them from the viewport and anything else, after which I can unhide the GeoNodes object. Next, I can select the GeoNodes object so that it appears in my geometry node editor again. And now I can press Shift A and search for an instance on points node. I'll plug that in right after the delete geometry. And for the instance, I want this primitives collection. So let's take this primitives collection from here, click and drag to drop it into the geometry node editor. And I'm going to check separate children and reset children, after which I can plug the instance into the instance socket of the instance on points. Now for every single point, all of the instances are appearing. So let's go ahead and click this option that says pick instances. Now clearly the scale is way too large. So I have to bring down the scale on all of the axes. So let's press shift A and search for a random value node, plug the value into the scale and we're keeping it at float so that it scales down by the same value on all of the axes. After which I'll change the min to maybe 0.5 and I'll change the max to maybe 0.15. And that seems all right. You can still see the nice little path through which our camera can move through. But I feel like I'll change the min to 0.1 because right now I had it greater than the max value. So that looks good. You can see the path even better now. And now I want to give this some random rotation, which I'll also animate. So I'll press shift A and search for another random value node, but this time it has to be a vector. So let's change this from float to vector. And since I wanted to rotate from minus pi to plus pi, which is a total of 360 degrees on each of the axes, I'll change the min to minus pi on all the axes and the max to plus pi on all of the axes. And then I can directly plug this into the rotation, but since I want to rotate these while animating them as well, what I'll do is I'll press shift A and search for a wave texture and I'll plug the vector of the random value into the vector of the wave texture. Now I can plug the color from the wave texture into the rotation and by plugging it into the rotation, we get these random rotations, which we can control by playing around with the phase offset. So for the next step, I'll go ahead and set all of my defaults. So I'll go to my render properties, switch on ambient occlusion, and I'll expand the drop down and change the distance to something high like 10. And to actually see the ambient occlusion, I'll switch to my viewport shading of render. And that looks great. I'll select the light and press delete to remove it. Then I'll go to my world properties and change the background all the way to the brightest white there is. And that looks fair enough. I might play around with a little bit of the ambient occlusion settings just before rendering, like increasing it to 20 or something to make it a little darker and things like that. But for now, that seems all right. Then to actually make this loop, you can always select the object and press Alt D Y and move it by the distance on the Y axis that you originally created the cube to be, which was 10 units in my case. And then you can press Shift R to repeat that action as many times as required to create more instances, after which you can add in some volume to the world to actually make sure that this is perfectly looping when you animate it. If you want to check out how to make it perfectly looping using volume, you can check out many of the videos that are present on my channel, or you can check out this particular video, which I'll link to the top right corner at the moment. It will also be present in the description. Beyond that, we have to actually set up our camera now. So let's select the camera and then press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, and then press R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then we'll press G Y and bring it back by half the distance of the original cube, which is going to be minus five units. And that brings it just to the start of the cubes. Now we can press zero to go into our camera view. And this is what we have to make this more wide angle. We can go to the camera properties over here, change the focal length to 25 millimeters, and we can go to the viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one so that nothing outside the camera view is seen. Then we'll go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second, change the end frame to 150 so 
that it's a five second long animation. Output folder can be wherever you want it to be. File format, I'm going to choose FFmpeg video and I'm going to change the encoding from Matroska to MPEG4 and I'm going to keep an output quality of perceptually lossless. Then I'll press the back arrow to go to frame zero and tap I location and then I'll go to frame 150 and then just press GY10 so that we move front by 10 units and then press I location. Then I can press A to select both the keyframes and press T linear and that's actually all there is to create this animation. Next up, you can go ahead and press render animation. I really hope you enjoyed this particular video and you learned something from it and can apply these techniques in your own animations as well. If you've watched so far, thank you so much for watching. The watch time really helps me and I'm really glad that you're enjoying these videos. I post videos every single day so there are definitely videos waiting for you to discover them and until the next video comes out tomorrow, keep creating and stay creative.